What's up comic and pop culture fans? This is James with Mint Hunter Comics. Why isn't anyone collecting Superman? Whenever I go to comic book shops, one of the first things I do is I talk with the owner, or I talk with whoever's behind the desk, and I say, have you got any cool collections in? Usually when they start talking about the collections that come in, they start telling me what they got, and they're like, oh, we got this, we got that, oh, and we got a bunch of Superman. Why are comic book shops as excited about getting Superman comics as they are with like valiant back issues? Is this not the Man of Steel, DC's super awesome spearheaded face to the entire publishing company? I don't get it. Well, maybe I do. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Why does it seem like there's a lot less collectors out there for Superman? He's one of the oldest He's been there since the start. He's got keys dating back as early as can be. The first appearance of Superman is arguably the most expensive comic book in all of the medium. So why is the stuff that follows and all his little keys not so much collected? We're going to talk about it today. And I think there's a lesson here to be learned about oversaturation in a market. What do I mean by that? It means there might be too much of it. Superman is a very popular character, and has been, but it's been declining. With Superman being such a spearheading popular character, as you can imagine, there were plenty of Superman books that were printed. So much, in fact, that it was, for many periods in time, DC's most printed comic that they had. So it's not like it's super scarce. And I think that's one of the big main problems. Now, and especially when you get into the 90s stuff, when you start talking about Death of Superman, Wedding, um, the things that followed, even though there's some really strong keys in there, like the first appearance of Superboy, uh, Eradicator, uh, Doomsday, Cyborg Superman, all those like kind of bigger key characters, they were so printed that... I mean, when you find an Adventures of Superman 500, I think the most you'd ever see on a Raw is like 10 bucks, and that's probably if it's the newsstand. I mean, that should be a more valuable book, but it's kind of the same thing I've talked about on this channel with Batman 497. There are so many 9.8s out there that even though that book is such a big deal, you can get it for like 80 bucks or less. It's the same thing with Superman. There's a million frickin' of these things, you know? So, those sort of keys, when you start looking at the 90s, there's just so many of them that comic book shops don't even know what to do with them. I was talking with my local comic book shop, and he was joking, but I could hear a little bit of seriousness in his voice when he was saying, he was like, I don't even want Death of Superman and Wedding Album and all that anymore. Now, obviously, he was joking, because you can end a day, you can still charge a small price tag on it. But it's, it's just interesting. Like, comic book shops don't want this stuff. And the reality is, if you ask any comic book shop right now what title it is that just sits, they will tell you Superman. Frickin' Ghost Rider, Daredevil, and Punisher have like 10 times the fan base that Superman has right now. I swear to you. I am running into people that collect Simpsons more often than I see Superman collectors. It's real, man. I think it's absolutely crazy, but there's some truth to it for sure. And it, it's rooted in the fact that there's so many of these frickin' things. What happens when you have a scarce comic book run meets a popular character? You get something like that first Harley Quinn run. It's a very desired run. People love to collect that entire run. And they love collecting those keys and those awesome covers because it's a popular character. And it wasn't the most printed run. But when you have Superman with Adventures of Superman, Action Comics, Man of Steel, I mean, there were so many versions. Despite there being so many versions, they were all equally printed to the max. So even the really good stuff, like the, you know, the John Byrne Man of Steel run, and your Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow and all those greater kind of 80s stuff, even stuff like that, uh, you know, I have trouble moving them. When I, when I have claim sales, that's the stuff that I always think is going to do well because of, I know how good it is. doesn't matter. 
even priced at even below fair market value, I've even had trouble moving it. It's true. Brings me to my second point here. Superman collectors are out there, but they do seem more focused on bronze and silver. Maybe even forget bronze and just silver. It's true. I try to sell bronze Superman comics, and yeah, I've got a few collectors that are interested, but for the most part, it's in the silver. That's where the interest is. I wouldn't even say value is. That's just where the interest is. People will spend 10 to 20 bucks on any random non-key Superman comics from the 60s, but they're not going to do it even for the 70s. It just, it's getting rarer and rarer that I find. I think people are just fatigued by the amount that Superman's been in our culture for many years, and now they're just funneling it into other interests. They don't want to collect a character that's been around so long, that's done everything, that's basically immortal, and they'd rather just collect the keys that go really far back. See, even in the 60s, Superman was a heavily printed dude. So even the 60s comics, they are out there. It's not like you're trying to find dead man keys or something much harder. You can find even your Superman keys out there. Now, a couple of things are interesting, little oddball pieces of information about this. As much as it was printed, I do think it's interesting that there are no super high-grade copies of the first appearance of Brainiac still on any CGC census. So I think that's really interesting. So it's, why was it so printed, but you still can't find that super high-grade? I don't know. So people are chasing those, but they're not really chasing the other stuff. So, Superman collecting is down. What else could it be? I hate to say it because I love Superman. What I'm about to say is going to hurt some people's feelings. But he might just be a bit of a boring character. It's a little bit true, depending on what decade. Um, I do feel like in the 80s, 90s, and up, they've done a really good job at making him a little bit more somehow relatable, giving him really good stories to work with. He has obviously great villains. But at the end of the day, especially in the 60s, he was just indestructible. You couldn't do anything to this dude. Uh, so I actually think they overcalculated and eventually gave him too many weaknesses, but that's just me. Most people don't see that. Most people just see him as completely immortal, can't be beat, Blah, 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 boring character. He's just too perfect. Real comic fans know that that is obviously not true, but the majority of people, based on movies, based on this, based on prior concept, they just think that he's a boring character. Um, and maybe we need TV and movies to show people that that's not true. I don't know. We feel like a Superman's been pretty well represented in TV and movies lately, but still... He has a hard time getting people to collect his stuff. So it's just an interesting phenomenon. Is it that it was so heavily printed? Is it that Superman might be a tad on the boring side and people just want characters that they can relate to more? Or is it that people are really only interested in collecting his old, old, old keys because he's been around so long? What factors go into this? Why do you think when comic book shops get collections in and it's a Superman run that they sigh and roll their eyes? Why is that? You really would think that they'd be excited, but they're not. Superman's had some of the best talent in writing, in art, in everything. And frankly, I, I still, to the end of my days, I love Superman. I think he's a fantastic character. I love what they've done with him through the years. I think he's absolutely great. I just worry that I don't think everyone sees what I see. So I think it's a perception issue, perhaps. Anyway, you guys can let me know what you think down in the comments. It is something I've been noticing for quite some time. It hurts my soul when I hear these comic book shop owners shitting on the guy. It really sucks, man. Anyway, I've been rambling. As always, keep on hunting. I'll see you next time.